Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. So this is a really quick video on how I drew these three different types of fur in coloured pencils and this video was taken from a six part tutorial over on Patreon so I go into a lot more detail over there and there's over six hours of footage. So yeah, if you're wondering why this is sped up and not in my usual real time sort of style, then that is why. The three reference photos that I'm using for this first study are taken from a brown horse, a sandy cocker spaniel and a white poodle. So hopefully with this you can get an idea of how to draw a variety of different fur types using different colour palettes and different techniques. The coloured pencils that I'll be using for this video are the Faber-Castell Polychromos, the my absolute favourite, and the paper is the Fabriano Art Artistico hot press watercolour paper in 640 GSM. Always such a mouthful. But yeah, I'm just intending this video to be a guide to share some of my techniques. So don't feel like you have to have all of the same supplies to have a go. Just see it as a foundation for you to work from and incorporate some of the techniques into your own drawings. So without further ado, let's just get stuck in. Okay, so first things first, I just use some masking tape to divide my 8 by 8 inch piece of paper into three sections. So starting out with the brown horse fur, I'm using ivory as a base to smooth out that paper and create a nice creamy texture that we can then work on top of with the next few colours. I chose ivory because this fur has got a warm yellow undertone. Next, I'm using burnt ochre to start mapping in some of that fur texture. So I use some little light pencil strokes with a light to medium pressure to start building it up nice and softly. You have to do it quite gradually and go lighter to darker with coloured pencils so that you don't go too dark too soon. So I'm just focusing it in like the darker areas and leaving the lighter areas for the highlights and I just vary the length of the strokes that I do to try and like blend it in and make it look really natural. I'm using burnt ochre because like I said before this is a very warm toned reference photo and there's definitely some orangey colours in there so this is like a nice transition colour between the pale yellow and then the next dark colour that we'll use. So just keep building up that fur, keep on focusing on the darker areas and keeping your eye on the areas where the highlights are. Now we're going to move on to the next layer and for this I'm using burnt sienna which is a red toned kind of colour and I'm doing the exact same thing that we did with the burnt ochre but I'm just adding another layer and working that burnt sienna into it to add some more depth and dimension. Next, I felt like I needed even more red in there, so I'm using Indian red in any of the areas where the reference has a bit more of a vibrant red kind of tone. And I'm layering on top of that with Burnt Umber, which is a dark brown, and I just felt like it needed a bit more of a brown tone, and I wanted to create some more depth in the really dark areas. So I'm just going to keep working in a combination of these two colours and keep building up that fur texture.
notice how we're gradually getting darker and darker with the pencils that we're using. So now I'm going in with dark sepia and I am adding this to the really dark areas to create even more depth. I'm concentrating a lot of it to the left side where the reference is really dark and then there's a little bit over on the right hand side as well. Now I'm starting to blend it over the highlighted sections a little bit to create a bit more fair texture in there and to add a bit more of like a brown kind of colour. I don't know if you can tell from the picture but it's got that sort of like brownie tone to it. So I'm just working in a combination of burnt umber and dark sepia to try and blend that in nicely. Okay, so this is now me coming back to the fur on a different day and I decided to go back in with the burnt sienna and apply a little bit more pressure this time to create more of a vibrant colour. That's one really good thing with coloured pencils, you can vary the pressure and create a different effect and I do find it's better to go in with a lighter pressure to begin with and then you can always build up on it but it's more difficult to take colour away, it's not the sort of medium where you can just take away what you've done. I've also started to go back in with the dark sepia and just darken up any of those like really shadowy areas. Then a little bit more burnt umber just to blend it all together and you are done. For this next section we'll be working on the cocker spaniel and this reference was taken specifically from the ear because I know how many people struggle with that kind of fur texture. So first things first, we're going to start with a creamy base of ivory again, as this dog also has a warm yellow undertone. I actually have a video on how to figure out which colour to pick for your drawings, so I will link that down below for anyone who's interested. Then I'm going to start mapping out the shapes in the fur with Bista, which is a warm tone brown, so that I can see where all of the individual curls are going to go. And this is quite a complicated fur to draw, but you've just got to take it section by section and try and look for where the curls are overlapping. You need to like try and disconnect yourself and look for all the little shapes that you can see and not think too much about the fact that it is fur. Now I'm using a combination of the Bista along with Burn Umber and Burn Ochre to start shading the fur and making it look more three dimensional. I do also start adding a little bit of dark sepia into the really dark areas. It's a case of trying to look for the little shapes, the darker bits in between the lighter bits and just really slowly gradually build them up. I always like to start with the dark areas first because it helps you to see where the mid-tones and lighter areas are. Oh, I've just started adding a little bit of burnt sienna in there as well, just anywhere that there's like a bit more of a red colour. So yeah, wherever it's more orange toned, add a bit of burnt ochre, where it's more brown, add some burnt umber and bista or whatever. But yeah, just keep building up those little shapes. You'll notice how I'm drawing some really weird looking like shapes that don't look like fur at all. But over time, once you start building up those different colours, I promise it will start to look more like fur. But yeah, if you're struggling, just map in where those dark areas are and then start building it up from light to dark around those dark areas, if that makes sense. Obviously, I go into so much more detail on Patreon and it is really hard to explain what I'm doing um, while it's sped up this fast, but hopefully you can get an idea for it. Oh, just for anyone wondering, that little tool there that I used was a Tombow Mono Zero Eraser and it's a tiny little eraser that you can push up in the tube and it just allows you to get the little areas that you want to erase.
Okay, this is where the really fun bit starts and here I'm using the Slice Manual Pen Cutter which is a ceramic knife and it just allows you to make little lighter hairs on it by scratching away those top layers of the pencil. So it doesn't actually scratch the paper, it's just taking away those darker layers to reveal the base colour underneath of the ivory. So I'm just using it to create those little flyaway hairs and finish off this piece. Now let's move on to the third and final section of fur, which is the white poodle fur. And I'm starting out with the lightest warm grey pencil, which is warm grey one. And similar to the spaniel fur, I'm just going to start mapping in the darker sections between the lighter sections. So any of those dark areas where you can see some shadowing and some like weird little shapes, I'm just mapping them in and then leaving the like really light curls so that the white of the paper shows through. I think that the technical term for this is drawing negatively. But yeah, a lot of people really struggle drawing white fur, especially on white paper, including myself to be honest. But you'd be surprised at how much darker white fur is than the actual paper itself. So I'm just going to carry on building up those little curls with the warm grey one. And now I'm going in with a bit of cold grey too, just to add a bit of a cool tone to any of the areas that are a bit more sort of blue rather than warm. So there was a bit on the right hand side, a bit on the left hand side and then a few bits in the middle. Then I decided I just needed an extra bit more depth so I used cold grey 3 on top of that. Now I'm going in with warm grey 2 to darken up any of the warm grey areas, just to add that next level of depth. Just to finish off, I'm adding a bit of warm grey free to add that next level of shadowing and to also create a little bit more of a contrast. So yeah, just keep building it up and I do use a little bit of like warm grey too to blend it in in areas. Just use a combination of the colours until you're at a level where you're happy. And that is that, that is the finished result. So I hope you have enjoyed this video and found it useful. I will leave a link to my Patreon below just if anyone's interested and I just want to say a huge thank you to everyone who watches my videos and also those of you who have signed up to my Patreon. It means the world to me and allows me to continue drawing. So yeah, thank you very much. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it, subscribe to see more and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.